No, I was at a dance and people bust shot and it was busting shot to my specific lyric. Um, and obviously, pull up, dance stopped. I checked myself because I thought, right, they sound yeah, yeah, yeah. close. And I'm excited right now. I'm yeah, yeah, shot. yeah. Oh, stop it. Yeah, like, <laughs> it was too clean and close. Like, yo. All right, clean, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, yeah, clean, clean, I'm yeah. clean, not, not dead. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love that, I love that. Yeah. But um, Deep down inside, you're thinking. No, nah, deep down inside, I'm thinking, shit, this is what you wanted, bro. Killer Keller, podcast, Killer Keller, official dot com. Street Culture TV. Beatbox created. We need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Coward Podcast. One dream. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London, or as central as you need to be, in fact. Big shout out to all the sharers and carers. Subscribe, get involved, be part of the magic. Get yourselves ready for the upcoming Hoddle Wars. It's time to graph punks up and get up with some NFT gaming. Also, big shout out to Chief Rocker Gear from streets to stage. Chief Rocker is the streetwear of champions. Um, and anyone who's got the Kellervision app, you know what to do. Free download, iPhone, Android, all the time for your street oi, culture. Oi, oi, Sports oi. <gasps> Inside the house, you hear the sultry tones of a gentleman that has a legacy to kill for in the jungle, to name but a few. A man that's internationally acclaimed right now, working with some of the highest of profile producers, Roll Deep Original, not to mention the original Rinse FM crew. Uh, <laughs> Flow down in the Call building. <laughs> Where to begin with you? Yeah, that's a title and a half, isn't it? Shit. Yeah, it just moves. It flows nice, though. Yeah, you've... And that was a one take. That was a one taker. Yeah, yeah, you're a pro. <laughs> you know what it is though, brother? Uh, and I said this just before we started. Having having a gentleman like you on with such a legacy, it makes conversations very easy to roll off, doesn't it? That's uh, I'm glad glad. It's, I'm glad it's that. I'm <laughs> glad um yeah, like a conversation's always like it's a weird place to be when there's nothing to draw from, there's no like there's no history or it's just a a, a, a short lived few statements when there's nothing really to add to it so mm. yeah yeah this will be a decent conversation mm -hmm. indeed speaking personally uh, you know you 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 to me are the mc's mc and it only really comes to light uh, yeah yeah real talk it only really comes to light when uh you flick through the the, the catalog that you have even from uh sessions where you're you're, you're going to drum and bass mm -hmm. Uh, and then we can get a little bit more deeper into your upbringing and the sound systems, yeah. the, the your, your father, and and mm -hmm. really getting into the lineage of you within the culture. Mm -hmm. That's where the MCMC MC comes in, my friend. I, I agree. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. True, to, true um, say. It's important for me because, like, just looking at myself as a young person, looking at MCing. Not necessarily songwriting or recording, just MC and master of ceremony. Like mm. them people, like there's many people I've watched um, do it, and I've really like always been drawn towards them. Their energy, their charisma. Obviously, you're surrounded by music and songwriters and singers and rappers and all that stuff. Especially with my age, and I was when I was younger. But the point is, is that an MC is a bit different for me, um, and the MC had like. Um, seemed more versatile for more situations. Mm. That's what I'm still seeing now. Like a MC, like someone from a from the grime scene that is focused on MCing, or even from the jungle scene that focused on MCing, mm. you can drop them anywhere and they can do their thing as long as you give them a microphone and a few bits and bobs, a drink or two. Mm. They just go and they can captivate a crowd where I've seen some studio-based rappers and performers they need a lot of things to be set up for them, or for like them to thrive. Yellow M and M's and the moon and the stars to align. And they're <laughs> instrumental. Gotcha. They're specific instrumentals. Yeah. Do you get know what I mean? And yeah. their fans to sing along with them yeah. so they can really. Because without at home. it, they're not. It's they're not. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you drop an MC in there and they don't need it to be their crowd. They will get it going. Mm. Like it's different. Oh man, you're right. MCing is such a vast uh, term for what loosely is from a reggae culture totally. um 
the MC has morphed its way into all different avenues. I mean, grime was really your what set precedence for your emergence. Definitely. Um, but but at the same time, like grime ha- had an incubative kind of place where it's like, yeah, yeah, th- you better be fucking good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Totally, I totally agree on that. The competitiveness, but I don't think that comes from grime. That comes from the sound system cultures. Totally, for sure. Like you better know that your sound sounds right or you better know that your dub plates are right or your MC is on point or something. You mm. better know, especially when you're going to link up with another tribe, mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. another local tribe. <laughs> like, you better know that, yeah, it's on. So on. the grime definitely just emulated that um, because the people that was kind of um, at the forefront of grime and the, pr- and, uh, the pioneers... Mm knew about that competitiveness mm. from even drum and bass or even from the sound system culture. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we just carried it on. Definitely going to get into the sound system culture things. You know, your family mm-hmm. um, ingrained. Uh, but <laughs> I think the biggest question I have to ask is where, where do you get, I don't even think it's aggression. When you, get, when you get on the mic, brother, it's like artillery. <laughs> it's like oh, yeah. the flow, it flips, yeah. it winds, it, it, it move, it, you lay back. Yeah. You, you, it's, it's a real self-assured aggression. It's controlled aggression. Totally. What, where does that come from? The greats. The, uh, um, I'm going to name a few. So from like... Someone like Bounty Killer, um, Stevie Hyper D, mm. uh, and then like someone like Bassman. Heavy. Yeah, like that, that word. Do <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like. That word alone sends yeah. shivers. The foundations <laughs> of the building just shook. <laughs> so it's like, there's many more, but I just tried to pick a few mm. of like people that like command their space or. And have a style that's unique, or even in Bounty Killer's sense, he's got a style that's unique. But that voice, that voice has been, that's been a voice before. There's Bura Banton, Budra Banton, mm-hmm. blah blah blah. The lineage of that voice, mm. do you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, like just looking at these people and just wanting to be, or wanting to be able to just have my version, or also fusing it just to be the ultimate, mm. <laughs> just trying to be the ultimate. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. But how do you? How do you bring together that ultimate, that defining flow, Dan? How do you how do you get to that point? How do you, how do you know when the recipe's right? Um, I've been listening to people and I've been listening to myself and the recipe still isn't complete yet. I'm still growing, still learning, but it's just not been, um, it's been honest with myself and I like them people I just mentioned. Mm. So I emulate them openly, but it still comes out original because... I am me as well. Like magpie, you know, you just go. little elements. Yep. Yes, facts. Yeah, which does take a a, a a a a time within the scene to to master what is good and what's bad, and how do you cherry pick that? Yeah, so I, I, again, it's always work in progress. Every song I critique to this day, whether the song's successful or not, um, I look at. I just keep listening and just try to refine. Refines the word. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I just try to keep what's working and lose what's not or enhance what's working sometimes. And also the fun part, because um, for me, when I listen back to something that I've just done, if I can't find the fun or if I can't see where I was having fun with this, um, it's not the right one. And that's just bringing it back to when I was listening to the greats. Mm. It's fun to me. I'm seeing fun, so I just want to do fun as well. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, so even if it's a serious lyric or whatever, artillery, as you say, like I just know that <laughs> I know that I'm delivering this content right now when it's a serious subject mm. or whatever it is, but it's fun. Yeah, still. Yeah. In that context, artillery is the most fun in the world. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> having it, have like yeah. having more to give. Yeah, yeah. sick. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We see you zone out. I think the last time, well, the last time we hung out was uh, Digital Soundboy Stage Carnival. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, home from home there. I mean, it's lovely when everyone's off work and we all know we're off work. It's like, it's yep. no school nights, nothing. Just no responsibilities. No responsibilities. No, no parents. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, let's get back to the beginning. Where did it all begin for you? How did it all start? What's the it? Getting into music. Yeah, I had no choice. I just some music 
musically orientated time of life. Um, the eighties, my mum was heavily into uh, every sound system tape she could record or get. Um, so I had that locked in the brain. I didn't know I liked it. It was just it's just language to me. Yeah. Um, my dad also is a. Well, he's a selector from a famous sound in Brixton called Coxon. Huge. Uh, um, no, your history. So, Google that. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I wouldn't say that's where it started for me, but that's where I just what became familiar with fanatic, like being a fanatic, like, because you're a selector, your whole house is full of rec records. My mum was a fanatic because, well, hello. <laughs> they made me, so, like, she must have mm, liked yeah, yeah. music. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um... It was always there. And then when I started to make my own decisions on what I liked, would have been around 10 years old. I remember my mum my bought me a stereo. She was like, yeah, you can leave my tapes alone now. You can listen to <laughs> your own stuff. And I was like, well, I ain't got no stuff to listen to. She was like, where's some money? You can go and buy a record or two. What was the first record? There, you know, good question. <sighs> Please, Hammer, don't hurt him. MC Hammer. Yeah. I'll give it to you. Mine was do the Bartman, by the way. So <laughs> No fear. Yeah. Just go I'm putting it out there. <laughs> um, Suck a dick if MC you don't Hammer, like it. Please Hammer Don't Hurt Him was the album. Then the <laughs> next one was Vanilla Ice. Yeah. Um, his album, no, I can't remember what that was called. Then the third record was Something Bliss by PM Dawn. Oh, the Bliss album. It wasn't an album, it was a single Set one. Set Drift on My Memories. That was a wicked Maybe tune. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was the three records that I just played all the sides yeah. of whatever, yeah. scratching whatever, like, yeah. And Were you then, a Fresh Prince fan? Was I a Fresh Prince fan? Fan, no. But I did watch Fresh Prince, mm -hmm. found it funny, but it didn't connect with me like, oh, that's something so cool. Mm. When I got a bit older, I realised, well, he had on every Jordans Imagine. straight away. Yeah. <laughs> and those jerseys he wore, yeah, 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 like, yeah, it's yeah. impossible to have a collection like that, <laughs> yeah, surely. Yeah, it was too... <laughs> But I, it, worked, it didn't connect with me at the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so it was early infant, like, pop rap. Totally, totally. MTV, that's what I knew. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and I remember my friend left the NWA tape around my house and I rinsed that. That Yo, was jokes. That's some low volume in the headphones business for the yeah, parents, right? Yeah, that was like, raw, like, yeah. fuck the police and all these songs. And I was like... yeah. That's mad messages that there's like it, 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 it gripped me for some reason. I didn't yeah. become a hip hop fan, but that tape, I rinsed it. Mm. And then um, that would have been, I would, I would have been about hmm, 10, 11. And then once I went to school, it was just jungle, like jungle, mm. ra uh, radio. So 13, we're taping Mampi Swift and Navigator, Brocky and Debt, we're, mm. we're taping these things. Oh, yeah. um, listening to it and then like 95 or something it was like yeah there's a new MC his name's Skibbity ha 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 he's, whoa what's this um, and then we're buying records we're doing the bedroom sets at MC in I'm, I thought I was um, as I said I thought I was Stevie Hyper D mm -hmm. um, so you're just homing your skills you're a fanatic from long time because you buying records or you're listening to a tape and you're figuring it out and you're going to a record shop saying, yeah, have you got this tune? Mm. All that stuff. I was never a DJ, but I still lived that life with the DJs. Get the records. Just yeah. get the records. Yeah. By um, any means. Uh, um, <laughs> so from from there, it was always like, yeah, all right, you can MC. You know how to MC. And then by the time we left school, six, uh, 96, 16, life just became a bit more focused and serious. So hobbies just became a bit less <laughs> indulged. In uh, hobbies, so what? So did MCing become the primary focus, or you're saying that that you you kind of detracted from MCing for a bit? Yeah, detracted from that because we wanted to get money, wanted to grow up, wanted to do this, yeah, wanted yeah, to yeah. go out, so forth. Um, so it wasn't a thing. It was like you know, if like you've got a craft or a skill, it's always going to be there. It might you might not be mm -hmm. sharp, but um, yeah, MCing was something that was always close, but nothing that I was really using that often. Until around probably the year 2000, mm. when them not started doing garage and so forth. Mm. And then I didn't MC to garage, but then one day, uh, Wiley was like, yeah, I made No We last week and this week we're making another one. Mm. You're coming to the studio, I know you can MC because we've been MCing for years, blah, blah, blah. 
I was like, Ugh. are you getting the understanding? We're talking to yeah. a general here. This, yeah. You know what I mean? This is no casual droppings. We're just picking the shit up later. Droppings. Come on. <laughs> so yeah, like year two thousand, I would say like once that once that scene picked up and the garage started and the man then was MC into garage and DJing now because they're all ex drum and bass fanatics. Like mm. I said, yeah, there is you know what I mean? yeah. So, um, Targets emphasized that a number of times. Yeah, it? so um, yeah. it's it is that. So. I was watching that happen and I wasn't a part of it because that weren't my sound. It didn't sound wicked enough for me still. Really? <laughs> nah, it was like, nah. And you got to remember like, you know what Mandem are like? Mandem are into garage because there's girls over there now. It wasn't mm. like, oh, that's a cool sound. Yeah, it's we're, too jolly. It's we're not too following bad. the sound. You was following you... the vibes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you mean. And I didn't even follow the vibes. I stayed, I didn't go to them raves no. um, yet. Um, and then, yeah, he made Noe, which to me was like a first, a first of a style, a first of a genre. It was definitely had loads of elements of hip hop, dance or so forth, yeah. all that shit. But it was our one. Yeah. And it was the one that just felt really English, <laughs> even though it was influenced by everything else. Yeah. Yeah. It just felt super English still. And I saw the impact it had. So when it was like, yep, yeah, next week, we're going to make another one. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I'll be there. And that tune was called Terrible. It wasn't terrible, it was a great song, but um, mm -hmm. it was that. And then the feedback I got from that, or we got from that, but it was all like, who's that guy on the end? Who's that guy with that voice? Mm. Um, oh, that's mm. Mark. <laughs> what? I thought you imported a next yardie to do that bit. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, like so. I would say you I would say you trim God's gift of manga most certainly that the in terms of tonality versatility and yep. you know it was so you, the, all those aforementioned and yourself so unique in mm -hmm. the mix it's like distinct very distinctive on a tune yeah especially if you put them together <laughs> yeah like it, the, it wavers so differentially like you're like okay wow these guys are crazy um so yeah it, it goes on from near the year 2000 then we start roll deep and then Ta da yeah. Uh, uh, what were you doing before? Because you said you put down the, the, the hobbies. And what, where, where, where were you up until 2000? Uh, outside a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> outside. These lyrics um, don't just come from nowhere, you understand? Yeah, yeah. Like, we was just trying to, um, trying to find yourself, really. Yeah. Um, had a few jobs, had a few side hustles. Do you regret not being associated with the drum and bass because you were influenced by that? No, I don't regret it. Um, I don't regret it because we... we I've paid my dues. I've sent, we've sent um, audition tapes, oh, demo you've done, you've tapes. Done we've done all, all that, that to Call cool FM and got told no. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's not yeah. like. Um, Isn't it funny how that that the, the gatekeepers of those genres at the time? I mean, they it set precedence to what we have now. We're so yes, blessed to have, facts. you know, what I mean, to have a scene we have in the UK. And if it wasn't for the guard. But isn't it funny that, you know, you kind of got to make your own scene? Right, fine. That's how Wiley felt. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Like, that's definitely how he felt. But um, it wasn't because of Jungle, like, oh, no, we're no, angry no. at Jungle. Yeah, we, but, love, yeah. we love Jungle. Yeah, but when you say it wasn't, I'd like, like, do I regret? I don't really regret it because... Um, Strong word, isn't it, regret? It, yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't for me then, because um, if it was, I would have been there. And now I look back at what I had to offer, I wouldn't, wasn't ready. No, no, I wasn't ready. I get it. I get it. Sometimes you've got to pay, pay dues yeah. and you've got to learn. It's not even, it's just life shit, isn't it? It's just Definitely. life. Definitely. Growth. Yeah. Um, to reach full circle and actually MC with someone like Trigger. Yeah. Or Shabba. Yeah. Skibba. God rest. But, um, Foxy. Yeah, so. Foxy as well. Um, even Icy Free. <laughs> saw me and was like flow down and how he's hailing me up I had to stop him and say look you're IC3 I know exactly who you are because he was doing the whole can I have a picture I was like of course you can because you are IC3 <laughs> I know exactly everything like I'm like I'm not running around thinking I'm flow down and I just got here Mm. He's a part of the puzzle as well. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I had to make him know that because I don't think I was ever going to see him again or so forth. But yeah, it's important that like them drum and bass man there like understand. Well, they do understand by this point. Do you know mm. what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Real, the, the real influences. Yeah, facts. Mm. Um, you were f there from the jump of Grime with a small handful of yeah. others. This is what... Uh, praise it be sung upon with drum and bass guys because they see 
condemning you. They see that you had, n you guys, you know, for want of a better uh, a romantic idea, you had nothing and built it from the jump. You, yep. you guys carved the way for, for dubstep. Yep. Carved the way for, you know, sub low to emerge and then the grime sounds. Whatever is happening in England now is the be part of that. From, yeah. from our point in the timeline. Yeah. Definitely. I do feel like, like I said, everyone knows who Puff Daddy is and hip hop and Biggie Smalls, Tupac, whatever it is, we, we've been exposed to that. Mm -hmm. But not everyone wanted to be them people. No. I know that Dizzy Rascal was someone that the kids wanted to be. be. Really, though. Mm. Like. Same with D Double. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be a double, though, can you? No. Yeah. Only one. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, like them, them people became way more influential than overseas people, mm, mm. even though they had more exposure and the bigger guns exposing and all that stuff. But mm. nah, man, the kids wanted it to be us. Mm. Um, and that's the, the magic of Noe for me. Like when I heard that, I thought, right, mm. that's an English badness. Mm. Currently, though, not what? Because we, yes, there's been English people, there's been people from the UK that have represented music and they are. Stay staples in this thing, mm. but it didn't feel young and current. Wiley, man, oh, <laughs> Wiley. Wiley, Wiley, Wiley. He is your Goldie, yeah. He's your okay. seems Goldie, right? Okay, versatility, just gift influencer, the, yes, yeah, a gi gifts, constant, yeah. just <laughs> and leveraging, giving people opportunity and leg up, yeah. Come studio. Yeah. That I've seen him say that to loads of people and by the time they leave the studio they've got a whole career in front of them yeah yeah they, that's, that's A&R <laughs> <laughs> essentially oh, well, the best yep. way to do A&R anyway yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so you're in the studio you're in, we're going to get into this you, so you're in the studio Wally and he plays you these tunes he plays you the first of these these seminal genre Sound defining wild, yeah, sounds yeah. Um, I'm sure Target, Danny Weed all these guys were all orbiting around the yeah, same yeah. sound you're hearing it all and everyone's thinking hang on a minute like what was it like in that space at that time it wasn't as aware as you made it sound <laughs> like, <laughs> like I'm cute jumping the, yeah, the yeah, conversation yeah, it wasn't as yeah. aware of what's going in still like yeah. it was like it was definitely like because Wiley's even that time when you said what happened between 96 and 2000, while he was still dabbling and making mm. beats and doing bits and bobs, so mm. we would always hear that, okay, yeah, you're cold, but that's not what we're doing now. Yeah, cool. But once it got round to the no eating and they're actually doing DJing and they're actively in the garage scene a bit mm. and back on Rinse FM and Rinse mm. FM's changed. Uh, it was more like, as I said, no, we just went mad. He had a tune called Nicole's Groove, which was more tended to the garage side. It was a vocal thing. Nice. But, but it was hard, though, as well. So when it came for Terrible now, and Terrible went off as well. Mm. So that's three now. He's three for three. Where, like, Wade wasn't like anything, but he knew. So he just knew that I need to keep this up. I'm going to produce. You guys are the rappers. Mm. Cool. Even though he's he he's the coldest rapper anyway, mm. do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So, but he had that system in his brain. Um, so, meanwhile, Danny is being influenced by Wiley, so he's making hard rhythms as well. Bad, bad. Um, and Target is a bad boy well. producer so, as well. Wow. Yeah, just as experienced as Wiley, yeah. like they was doing it for the same amount of time. Mm. So, they were like the we was. Understanding that, yeah, studio is the place to be. Mm. Like, Wiley had a studio. So, yeah, we was always there. And it mm. wasn't as strategic as like, right, what's the beats? Let's make a song. But stuff was just formulating somehow mm. because we're just young people having fun. Um, and the feedback was telling us everything. We wasn't knowing much at the start. We was mm. always like, well, we've, yep, we've done it again. We've got a new one. All right, it's cool. Yeah, another one. The momentum on this must have been crazy. Yeah, it was that. And... Um, and then Dizzy added that to the thing and he had his own rhythms and his own <laughs> things to say and his own star power. So, yeah, it just became a snowball effect kind of thing still. Yeah. It wasn't like, right, yeah, we know that we're going to go forward and win. We just was involved to the point where we wasn't even trying to win. We mm. was involved, staying a part of the process mm. and things and opportunities were just forwarding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it did. Uh, and uh, a real... Uh, Wu Tang force. Yeah. Now, 
when like when I do the research or watch documentaries and stuff like that, I think, right, oh, that's us. Yeah. But they was before us. So uh -huh. yeah, we're them. Yeah, yeah, it's early. Yeah. Love that. Um man comes in to the pod trap with a Vivian Westwood top. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it shorts. does not go amiss, yeah? <laughs> you ain't seen the shorts. We could stick to the th yeah. I, mean, I mean, this is culture right here, land, the <laughs> physical embodiment. And uh, one thing that was certainly hailed up uh, early doors was the punk ethic of, uh, of grime. Again, having no knowledge of what punk was about when people were saying these things, mm. didn't understand. Mm couple of documentaries later and YouTube later. Oh yeah, it is punk. It mm. is that. Um, some people in Grime, or it just from the street culture of today, might not find that as a cool statement because you don't really know what punk's about. You just might mm. see mm. that. You see what you see. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's us. It's mm. us to the point of it's rebellious. Mm. It's, it's society is not here for it. No, it really was not. <laughs> yeah, they like, did not know what they were about to get, yeah, get introduced Yeah, it's like not here for this. <laughs> so, it, yeah, I see, I understand why people say that's just punk. Do you, I find it super intriguing because, you know, as, as a beatboxer, multi-vocalist, mm. hip-hop, drum bass esque kind of guy, um, you know, because my instrument is different, I, I learned so much within other genres to try and catch that, that kind of discipline of, you know, beat patterns and stuff. It's so intriguing to me that you guys, you didn't know about punk like that or didn't know about Wu-Tang like that. That, to me, I, I don't know whether that is, of course, you know, isolation and just doing your own thing. Maybe it just, maybe music wasn't, well, it was, but it just, <laughs> it's so hard to kind of comprehend because you came up from a, such an organic, you know, sound system world. Uh, the Blinkers must have just been on just doing this. Um, I can't, I don't, yes, it's definitely that, because, um... I fucking love it, I like, love it. Hearing, like, Wiley always had a, he used Puff Daddy a lot as an example. Can imagine, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, you think you're the gym, you're the, you're this, you're that, you're that version, and I'm the middle, I'm going to produce, I'm going to mm. sing a couple times and mm. whatever, I'm mm. going to do the songs, but yeah, it's all that, so that was, I know, and that's hip-hop, that's rap, mm. so I know he had that. Blueprint. Uh -huh. um, but to go against the grain and just form your own sound and all mm. that stuff, I just, I, I don't think he thought, right, them punk guys done it like this. No. Let's go. Because it's impossible to fathom. Yeah. <laughs> that DIY approach is yeah. when you've got nothing, you yeah. just have to move. Yeah. Um, I don't even, yeah, I just, I just think that he knew that he had a style that people need to hear. Yeah. That's why he kept making them, yeah. do you get what I mean? Like a style that people just need to yeah. hear. And eventually that style became a scene. Yeah, yeah just like the snare alone. It kind of reminded yeah. me, at the time I first heard it, you know what I thought? You know that Sonic tune? Yeah. That coo, yeah, it's that, it's that snare. Metallic no fuck, yeah. Crazy, yeah. crazy. Um, so he had a pool of MCs. Yeah. And you were most certainly one of the forerunners mm. in terms of vocal, here we go, vocal elasticity. Ooh. Ooh. Bars. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and it was all or nothing, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, who's it that really... guy with a voice? Yeah. Who's that guy with a voice? Who's like, that guy with a voice? It felt like, oh, I found my voice because as we said, I've been emceeing from school as a young person so forth. I've listened back to tapes and I sound nothing like this. Um, I sound anxious. Mm. <laughs> I sound like I was trying to sound like someone. Mm. Um, but you know, I think year 2000, it has to be year 2000 or even 1999, dance all changed. And they started to do this on the music as well. Mm. Beanie Man's got a couple of songs like this. That's just... Dangerous. Yeah, do you know what I mean? They just went quiet. War 21, so, mm. um, so cool. There's people that just went, they like Lexus, you know, they like, like that, stood out to me I'm a yeah. dancehall fan and I was standing in Brixton one day uh, outside Blacker Dread record shop and these tunes were just beating and it was 99 and it was just new dancehall and I was thinking them voices are cold I didn't know that next year I'm going to be having to do this voice as well I just mm. know that dancehall changed and it became more focused and more like no one shouting in the booth because they were like oh! like Cableton mm. do you know what I mean mm. Bon Bounty like, there's so many people that have project then 
there was a relaxed way of delivery that came in around yeah. that time and I noticed it. I didn't think it was for me or I need to do it because I wasn't even thinking of doing music. Mm. But once I got in the booth and I heard my voice in the headphones, because I didn't that's the first time I've had the headphones on and done really? booth. Yeah. To make that tune. I never put on booth headphones. I'm incredible microphone in the bedroom. What was that like? Speakers. What was that like when you first heard heard it to that? It felt like just warm and like personal. Like I really was hearing myself. So could I you could detach choose. yourself? Could you detach yourself from it? Because some artists they detach themselves to be able to make it a definitive song. Yeah, for me, I ha now I've balanced it out. I have an ear. I need natural room. I need natural sound as well as that nice. cup sound. So I balance it from my recordings now. But at the time, rookie, I just had both on. And I just enjoyed hearing the warmness and mm. it made me project warmness. Mm. Um, and I didn't look back. <laughs> right. Uh, that low register yeah. voice, which is synonymous for Flo Dan. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, um, and that era of Raga and Sin as, as a whole, that, uh, that troubles um, certain classes of Britain. That's <laughs> quite a scary, <laughs> intense... <laughs> It's true, isn't it? They, Yo, it's dark, isn't it? It's dark. dark. What, that's what makes gunshots go off in clubs. That's I know. What, oh. I know. Have you experienced anything like that when uh, you... Hello. Um, <laughs> Sidewinder. <laughs> nice little segue to Sidewinder here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when... It, that was the... Because I've heard about things like that and heard the greats talking about, yeah, when we did a dance and people bust shut and... <sighs> no, I was at a dance and people bust shot and it was busting shot to my specific lyric. Um... <gasps> And obviously, pull up, dance stopped. I checked myself because I thought, right, they sound yeah, yeah, yeah. close. And I'm excited right now. I've yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, stop it. Yeah, like, <laughs> it was too clean and close. But, yo, all right, clean, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, yeah, clean, clean, I'm yeah. clean, not, not dead. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love that, I love that. Yeah. But, um, Deep down inside, you're thinking. No, deep down inside, I'm thinking, shit, this is what you wanted, bro. Like, <laughs> don't fucking start checking your back pockets if you mean shot. Just chill and, it, like, vibes. Um, but it was just so, like, it felt like, all right, you can't get a bigger highlight than that. There's no bigger reload than that, than real gunshot. Yo, give me. <laughs> Look, right, you. <laughs> you wanted that, bro. You wanted that. <laughs> that is the ultimate acclaim. I'm mad. Yeah. Not that we it's advocate so it, but petty. dude, yeah, no, it's, it's just us 80s kids. We're brought yeah. up on 18, man. Yeah, like, yeah. There you go. There you go. Like, yeah. it's incredible the idea that, that, that it gets, it escalates to that point. Like, fuck it, I'm going to waste some money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to dash you soon, I've done it as well. <laughs> yeah, like, fuck this. I need yeah. to do this. But I'm not strong enough to release the energy so this firearm can do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa. Wow. So casual about it. like. Yeah, because it's, 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 it's happiness, yeah, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's happiness. You like When you're from the culture, you know the difference yeah, between... Yeah, yeah. Yeah problems and that <laughs> yeah yeah it's true um but like i was saying like a lot of uh you know the rural aspect areas of, of of the uk that you know this is auntie era of of <laughs> tv where it's just like how very dare you you know it's that same punk attitude of like no you can't do something different you can't be from that minority you can't be that mm, class yeah. you just shut it down shut it down now and uh, it breeds monsters. It breeds fucking goats. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. Um, yeah, having the minimal, just working for minimal. Yeah. Creates you to be a madman at this thing still. Yeah. Channel you all of a sudden. Yeah, it was weird. How was that for you to channel that, that whole time where yeah, that transition? I, like, I felt like I was already established, like, Done my doing my thing in grime and roll deep is roll deep and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it's like Channel You just looked like a a cheap version of MTV Bass. It was like a like because remember like you're seeing the UK do what they do, mm. but we wasn't polished yet to mm. say the least. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Why for that? But um, it wasn't seasoned. So, yeah, the quality of the product wasn't always high. Did that trouble the... Because in many, many respects, it, it gave 
opportunity to progression. Totally. But then at the same time, because of the quality and standards and just you know filling space on on air, it also created a bit of a two steps like, back. Uh, yeah, like uh, yeah. that's not cool because like you so solid on there are not looking like your bedroom MC. No, no. Roll deep on there are not looking like no. you know what I mean that. That's why their videos were on other platforms also. Yeah. But it's like Channel U was great for the UK for the reason of, yeah, get out there and learn your thing. Um, but for me, as a person that was, oh, I'm roll deep, I'm above mm. that. Mm. I didn't really feel a need to really indulge in Channel U. It was like, yeah. okay, that's for you lot. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm flow then. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. I enjoyed some parts of it and some parts I thought, this is silly. Yeah, a lot, there's a lot of, you know, it sounds crass to say it, but you know, there's, I guess you get put on TV, there's an, an obvious couple of Q jumps that you take, you know? <laughs> yeah, facts. <laughs> yeah. Um, but looking back, it was like the UK definitely shaped itself via Channel U. Yeah. Um, because the radio element and like tuning into the radio was limited. Like people wanted to see stuff now, mm. like he was getting there. Mm. And whether he was in a tracksuit or in a swimsuit, like we just mm. want to see you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, he yeah, acted like a, a visual pirate state, a beacon for yeah for people. Uh, and I guess that could, what so propelled. that's only a positive. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and it propelled roll deep into the mainstream because of the standard and quality that we talk of. Yeah, definitely. Um, I feel that roll deep is like it's like a bit priv privileged because it's the first. Mm. You know what I mean? Like we had Wiley, which was the reason for the sound. <laughs> he's like, his MC and his songwriting, whatever it was, like he, they wanted to sign him. Mm -hmm. And he was like, yeah, you can't sign me. You've got to sign my crew. You know what I mean? So it's like mm. privileged in that way. Um, so I would say we didn't have to like, like how I see people building themselves now, we didn't necessarily have to do it like that. No. A lot of stuff did we like, we was the first and it just was here. Like, mm. okay, so who's going to perform? Well, the only ones are them. Do you mm. know what I mean? That's what I feel it was for us. Obviously, we were sick. And then mm. the competition had to make us get sicker. Nasty crew, this crew. Bear crews popped up. Yeah, yeah. You, now you have to earn the right to yeah. be the guys. Fire camp. Hello. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, <laughs> so it's like, you had East Connection. Mm. You have yeah. to earn the right to stay here. Because, yeah, they like you are the blueprint. So, therefore... You can lose this spot if you slack. That competitive aspect though mm. propels the genre. It makes it does become this, you know, how many reloads? You know? <laughs> how many of us are in the room? Is there ever too many men? Yeah. No. Nah. <laughs> well, boy better know. Yeah. Um <laughs> it's like I wish that was still amongst the young people. Mm, so do I, man. Like they're all talented. Yeah. They're all sick. They've all got a mad idea that inspires me yeah i just hate that they don't have it out yeah in that realm what what yeah whatever happened to the combat yeah like your lyric versus mine i don't know okay my opinion is people just started getting paid yeah and realizing it ain't about my lyric no. it's about getting paid but they don't understand that it's a case study in itself. Like you've got to learn and develop, you hone your craft, isn't it? And that's part of the battle. Yeah, um, but some of them would be like, no, because I just went viral and now I got a record deal. Can you can you uh, appreciate and sympathise with that? Yeah, yeah, I can because it's like they, like my dad says it. Yo, them no carry rec record box. Them no do this. Mm. I said, Dad, it's the record box. Yeah. We don't need um, USB key. Yeah. Record box. Yeah. yeah, but you for understand. I know you for understand, mm -hmm. but that's not there's not even records in the club. So <laughs> don't even get turntables. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Do you know I mean, yeah, that's what I mean. There's not even record yeah, player yeah, yeah, in yeah. the club, bro. So it's like they've just got they've got different tools now. Mm. Don't be jealous that they can crack the code this yeah. quick. Yeah. It just is that. Do you get what I mean? Like 100%. it's like me saying, right, you didn't do no pirate radio. No, yeah. they didn't. Nah. They just jumped on Spotify and streamed the fuck out of the place and that's what you was trying to do, really. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you was. Yeah. <laughs> if we was, if yeah. you, if, if there was a time where all of a sudden you realised there was a jukebox in the sky and you could just press any, <laughs> anything you wanted you could listen to. Record shop, why? Done. Yeah. <laughs> so they have that now. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine yeah, with, uh, with that. But I still miss that because they have that, they can just rest in their yard and not yeah. really go outside with it like that. Yeah. Like, and I challenge you, 16 for 16. Yeah. 
They'll be like, that's long. I've got gal, I've got money. Why am I doing that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nerds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we are, where yeah, we, we are. We are. <laughs> Certified. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you think circumstances like that will change? I mean, you know, just stemming away from, from grime, we're into, you know, the drill era. We're, we're moving into some whole other era now. And, uh, <laughs> And I'm you're a part of that, bro. You're part of the whole. Yeah. You're part of the narrative. Yeah. Um, do you think that the the conditions for MC breeding will go back? I hope it don't go back, back, but go to that place, like you say, of competitive one to one. Um, I think everything does repeat itself. Mm. Um, and I do think that even in this era, there's the odd person that really does deal with this like a craft. Mm. I'm not saying that they're all. Lazy. No, I'm not saying. Well, give that. me, give me an example because there's you. Obviously, yeah. give me some other, give me some other names that you're like, yeah, yeah. Listen, up and coming or established. They, Someone like it. Dave is easy to say. Yeah, Dave, you know that he didn't just go viral and do a yeah. feature with Drake, and that's why he's here. Hundred percent. He's got something to say, mm-hmm. and he's gonna say it. Mm-hmm. Circumstances means we got it like this. Mm-hmm. So I'd say it's easy to say, Dave. Nice. Um, with Jay Huss, maybe a Jay Huss. Right. Again, amazing. Like, for me, it's like, wow, like, um, he's a perfect fusion of the UK and his heritage. Yeah, whatever, sure. Whatever upbringing he's had, that's in his music. Yeah. Like, how sound system is in my up, um, upbringing and music. Whatever African vibes and Muslim vibes, whatever it is he's grown up, it's in his sound. Hundred. But you can see that is or hear that is an English you as well. Yeah. I love that. I think he is perfect at that. So he's one of the sickest. Um, but there's, like, everyone's got their voice because everyone's confident that they're English. Mm. That's what mm. I like. Like, yeah. I think everyone's confident. They ain't doing much accents unless it's the accent that they heard in their yard. And there was a yeah. time where that definitely was not the, <laughs> the, the, the thing to be doing if you're from England, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, American accents and things. And, and yeah. every accent. Yeah. But now, like, I think the comfortability is there. So it's hard for me to hear something and think, Nah, man, that's dead because I can hear the individualism. I can hear the creativity. It don't always have to be a vibe I'm in mm. into, but I can just look and say, oh, you're doing your English thing still. I rate mm. that. And this, whenever you're watching it, it doesn't have to be now. Mm. It can be later. But um, definably, uh, your relevance has been perpetuated yeah. by the producers that you're you're moving and shaking with. I mean, you know, if, if Wiley and Target... <laughs> Uh, it wasn't enough for you, you know. Actually, well, let's just, you know, how did that come about? How did how did you get into this new space? How did this come about? I think it's because so, of how I was moving in my old space. I right. don't, well, not even think I know it because someone like Fred, um, who five years ago would have yeah. been not as big as he is today. Yeah, 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 yeah. He said, "I want to work with Flo Dan. Why? Because he's sick from low deep days. Blah yeah, blah, yeah. blah 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 blah." So, get I end up in the studio. We make a tune called Rumble. Mm. We made a few songs, but Rum- Rumble was what we made. Um, and that sat on the hard drive for a good long while until mm. we met Skrillex and then they done some more collaborations on that tune. Wow. Brought it to more life because it was sick already. Um, and then that tune got dropped at his boiler room recently because, I, like I said, we made that tune five years ago. Yeah. So last year, this time, it got dropped on his boiler room. It went viral. And then that's it. We just... Fueled the fire just because the fire's been burning, as you yeah, said. Yeah, but yeah. that just big canister of gasoline just fell on me there, and yeah, it started roaring differently. Dude, I, I just with pride, I'm so pleased for you. Thank you. And the way that <laughs> you must have just been sitting there having your dinner, and I got a call you saying got a call. the tune's gone mad. Remember that song we did five uh, years ago? <laughs> it's gone mad. <laughs> you won't believe this. <laughs> and you know, as a vocalist, yeah. And when it's like, because remember, I got sent to the studio by Danny. He's like, listen. My mate's mate, no, my mate's brother, producer, what's the word of you? What's his name? Fred. <laughs> Dad. <laughs> <laughs> We've had this conversation yeah. before, dude. What are you doing? <laughs> listen, listen to me. He works with Ed Sheeran, Steph London, Burner Boy, Go Studios. It's nice, 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 nice. What's his name? Fred? Cool. Yeah. Well, it wasn't Fred again yet. He actually said... Um, from that session, he named himself Fred again because I'm got the I'm in the booth, and I said Fred again, 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 again. 
Ah, uh, see. He said, he said when he Real left, history. He said when when I left, he just that was in his head all for days. Like yeah, Fred again in your in your voice. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Flow down voice <laughs> <laughs> every I night. Said, okay. kind of. This is great that we've actually got a song together that's yeah. worth anything now because, rah, your name's Fred again. I'm like, yeah, yeah. safe, sick. That's so sick. Yeah. Wow. Um, and you've toured the world. You're touring the world. About to. Yeah, about to do more touring. I've, I've, I would say I've toured about a third of the world, but about to do another third still. So, um, what's Australia. Your say? What's, what's your dad say? Yo, Mark. <laughs> 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 Be like what you idea with the things, <laughs> yeah. um, because um, yeah, he's he's been of a like his thing is like Shabaranks is the greatest artist alive to him. Shabaranks, and you can't give him vibes cartel. You can't say popcorn. You can't say Shabaranks. So he's always saying like, bro, all these guys are bad. They're bad, bad, bad. But Shabba's the guy because he had the hits. Yeah, if you ain't got no hits, and he was saying this to me like ten years ago, mm -hmm. like. Where's your Wiley record? Like, we see Wiley on the, we see this, but we can't see you. Even though the man might say you're bad, but uh. so now this is what he wants to see. Yeah, he wants to see all this stuff. Like, <laughs> pouring down. <laughs> like, yeah, bittersweet. Sending WhatsApp to Jamaica, everything. Yeah, my son. Rare, rare. On the way here, he called me and said he sent a freestyle that I done on one extra to one of the people them in Jamaica. He said that they messaged him back, said, yeah, 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 bad, but I want to be on one extra. Can't you get me on there? <laughs> and he was like, that's how people are. That's the way it is. Yeah. It means you're winning. Yeah. Right? It means you're winning. Wow. Proud parents. Yeah, facts. <laughs> it's funny, you don't even realise the amount of things they actually do say. They're, you know, the good things, all the things that the neighbours, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, whatever, whatever the job is. I, I just think it's like, they like when they can speak the language their peers speak because it's like right you do this street thing you're an MC you're a jungle mm. I'm gonna go and tell these people about you and mm -hmm. they don't even know what jungle mm -hmm. music is or yeah. MC and is makes them feel yeah. like they now know they can, like no yeah. he's in the charts yeah right that's so like hard. yeah he's in the charts now so yeah <laughs> yo it's one of the biggest rewards on the planet isn't it to just make people that you proud. respect yeah yeah, yeah to be, like people that you respect make them proud make it like yeah make it full circle because, again, me and you understand now, nah, there's people that are never going to be in the charts that are sick. 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 Yeah. And we'll pay to see them tomorrow. Yeah. And it's not about the charts, but it's nice to be able to speak that language yeah. for them people that need it to be that. Yeah. And the truth. Yeah. Your creative truth. Because there was a time when there wasn't that creative truth. For me? For Grime. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Facts. It wasn't, there wasn't that opportunity in Windows. And yeah, and for to, to be so unapologetic about it, because I yeah. remember conversations about, all right, it's going to be grime, but shall we, we need to make it for the radio. Uh, we need to have a hook. We need to make sure it's got that bit. And yeah, and Roll Deep <laughs> had hooks as well. That's why I ain't no mistake about it. That's the genius of Wiley. Yeah. Because... It, it ain't like we was following a blue uh, like a blueprint other than Puff Daddy. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, <laughs> which is yeah, Mine's a lot of shiny print. suits. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like he was that guy that wanted to say shake a leg. He wanted to make these sample songs because he was a heat makers fan as well, yeah, yeah, yeah. sampling old stuff. So that wasn't a formula for the scene. It was his style. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And um, then it become like, now nah, we need these things in the song because then the radio's gonna play it. Yeah. We didn't know what the radio's gonna play no. our first time round. Yeah. Um, the Roll Deep mixtape, which was a, a oh, for me, it's like, what, what was it called again? In at the Deep End? No, that was the that album. That was the album. The, the one after it that was almost like. We went mad on that because we thought yeah. our, our um, album was soft. Yeah. <laughs> we got told our album was soft, so we said, all right, mixtape. Yeah, that mixtape <laughs> was banging. <man. laughs> Pen Pals. Pen Pals, and see, even them real songs. So it's like, yeah, we didn't go mad. We still just loosened up the format yeah. and. Didn't mix them down. That's all that was. Just Our beautiful. album not mixed. Yeah. <laughs> Big shots a day. Yeah. Just like Trim. We unleashed Trim on that and unleashed like all the other rappers that didn't, didn't really get a shine or mm. a f vocal point on the, al on the album. People are going to watch it and say, oh, my language is terrible. <laughs> Sorry about the shine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, trim, more flowers to Trim. Oh, wow. Amazing. Amazing MC. Um, and yeah, all of you guys, man. I mean, you were part of... 
and continue to be part of the British legacy, man. Yeah, Scratchy. I ain't said his name scratchy. once. Scratchy. Scratchy, man. <laughs> oh. Yeah, exactly. You've got to cry if you say Scratchy, man. I can't even Jesus. do it. Absolute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah that things in his brain. Yeah. It's funny, isn't it, when you're at the beginning of a of a scene, or at least carving the characters, how characterful those people are. We, we speak about it all, um, all the time. We think that the, we say these new school guys have got less character. They're technically astute, they're crazy, yeah. but characteristic yeah. wise, they don't stand out no. amongst each other. Why is that? Why is that? I don't know. I can't, I ain't got the answers. I'm just seeing things and I'm talking them as I see yeah. them. And we was characters, like cartoon superheroes. It's not everyone was a winner. Yeah. But not everyone was the strongest, mm. but everyone was definitely always recognisable mm. by their voice, by their style, by their whatever it is. Mm -hmm. These people have all look the same mm. and sound alike. Yeah. <laughs> Comment below, tell us what you think. <laughs> no, you're old fam, yeah. Trust me, I'm sick, yeah. I'm different to them, man. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. I know. Uh, you're you're forever ingrained in the tapestry, my brother, and thank you so much. You've made you you make this culture so much more colourful. Yeah, I didn't know it was gonna be like down to me like that still because um even my peers I feel that um they're not really f carrying that hunger to be that MC's MC. Mm. Everyone's a sick musician. They're, all my dogs are my mm. dogs, and I work with them because they are sick mm. musician, but. This MC game ain't for everyone and like it is, sometimes it is a bit like, it is um, not glamorous. No. It's, it's, not, it's not always glamorous no. when it's not going right and these, don't, these people don't know your bars and the, the DJ's not playing everything you like mm -hmm. and the setup ain't great mm. and they can't see you because you're mm -hmm. ground level. Mm. Well, there's loads of things that could be like, this is a shit job. Yeah. But yeah. I still love it at yeah. that level. Yeah, you do, don't you? Yeah. And I guess the term is, you know, if you are that MC that isn't getting the most out of themselves, it's like, well, sh shit will get off the pot because you know, <laughs> Flo Dan's coming. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, it's Flo Dan's approaching. Yeah. yeah. Is that like on? Yeah. Is that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, real talk, like, yeah, like MCs I, ain't for, you know, you can't. Yeah, and I, I, I look around and I even, like, even with the drum and bass lot, I do think, well, when, when Shabba, when Harry Shotter, yeah. When they stop, what's next? Yeah, 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 yeah. Real talk. That really enjoy it like that and carry it like that. Mm. Like, what's next? And please comment below mm. and sh say what's next. Tell them because, what's next. Because, like, yeah. I'm not saying I know um, everything, but I want to see that there's someone that Characters. really loves it. Yeah, yeah and it. does it for them reasons. Yeah. When X Man stops, <laughs> like, <laughs> please, guys. Yo. We're dropping some names out here. Like, yeah. we, uh, we've covered eight of Z of the list. <laughs> Flo Dan loves MCing. Loves it. And on that note, thank you so much for joining me. Love you, brother. It's been great. Love you too. Thank you. My brother. Killer Keller Podcast, out like that. Yeah? You want more? You want more? Hey, we've got loads of 500, in fact. Hey, tell a friend to tell a friend, all right? Killer Keller Podcast, out like he was out of fashion, all right? Easy. <laughs> <laughs>